Sunday morning comment uh, on a development that occurred last week and ask you this simple question. Does that poison taste good? Well, on the 24th of this month, the government had to rescind its April 26 ban on chemical fertilizer. In my opinion, the ban was one of the boldest moves taken by a head of state in recent times. In his capacity as the commander in chief, the president bowed down to public pressure and gave in to what the government initially called an ironclad ban. <laughs> Well, I cannot entirely agree with the president's move, but then again, I'm not the president. And if the president chooses to listen to his people, well, then that's his choice. Now, yes, we have to agree there were many missteps in the initial launch of the program. Of course, all the naysayers say they should have done this in this way or that way, especially the clown clan and the opposition. But that's in a perfect world. We are educated enough to know that we might not get everything right in the first round. Yet, the opposition speaks as if they are so perfect in executing any matter. We all know how they executed the five years under their governance, which resulted in a broken economy, depleted security, and a horrible country to live in. All right, let's talk about the ban for a moment. In his election manifesto, the president said that he's more interested in engaging in green agriculture, meaning the president's administration will engage in agriculture that's less harmful to humans. So the translation of that is he's going to take steps to reduce the number of toxic chemicals in our food systems, which has been one of the leading causes for non-communicable diseases here in Sri Lanka, especially uh, CKD, chronic kidney disease. So he banned the use of chemical fertilizer and forced our farmers to use organic fertilizer instead. Of course, there were problems in the execution. However, we need to understand what was the real intention of this move. Basically, what, what the ban, what is the president is trying to say with this uh, ban that he have taken. He's simply saying, for the love of Christ, stop eating poison. That's it. The ban was meant to tell you and me, even our farmers, to stop the small or medium or whatever quantity usage of chemicals that are very harmful to our bodies to be used in our food cultivation to stop. Because just because you did it for many, many years doesn't mean it's right. So this man is asking us to stop eating poison. No sooner the ban came into effect, the clown clan of the opposition saw it as another opportunity to create disruption and chaos, milk the situation for their petty purpose and started fueling farmers to protest against the ban. For a moment think, if the opposition claims that they love the people and are fighting for the people, shouldn't they be the first to tell you to stop eating poison? Oh no. They don't care whether you eat poison or whether your kids be victims of any type of disaster in the future. That does not matter. As long as they can use the moment to milk towards their petty purpose, well, that's what matters. So you got to ask the question, does the opposition really have the best interest of us, the people? In short, we as a nation, instead of launching a war against the use of chemical in our food systems, our agriculture, what did we do? We launched a war against the man who asked us not to eat poison. We did everything possible to prove him wrong, thinking that siding with the clown clan and demonstrating that the president is wrong would eventually be a victory for us all. Instead of fighting with the farmers and forcing them to stop using chemicals in our food system, we fought the man who asked us to do the right thing. We should all feel proud about our nation, shouldn't we? Next time when you are at the supermarket buying produce, think about your children and ask this question. How comfortable are you feeding poison to your kids? Then ask yourself this question as well. Who's the real winner here at the end?
Is it the president who asked us not to eat poison? Or is it the clown clan and the opposition and the big fertilizer companies? Or is it you and me? Next time you look at your kid's face, the answer will be very evident. All right, shortly, uh, I will sit down with my guest tonight, cricketing legend Roshan Mahanama, who is also part of many charities, including breast cancer awareness, prostate cancer awareness, and many more. But before that, as usual, Dhani Dubitana was Our fax guy is here to talk about uh, something completely different from um, the organic uh, fertilizer fiasco. Uh, Dhani Dubitana is here to talk about cricket and Sri Lanka cricket. Uh, what's your focus on the real story, Dhani mm, uh, As a introduction to the real story i think from something we have noticed in this program is and given the reset series that we did some in evaluation of the entire series something that came out was this need to to form unity or unify the nation and i think that is where the real story <coughs> in 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 today's episode starts and that is where the real story really only goes to where the role that sports and specifically cricket plays in bringing people together so sports has been recognized as a great unifier across the world, and especially within Sri Lanka. Amongst the field of sports, cricket holds a place close to the hearts of all Sri Lankans. Sports have had a unique ability to bring people together in the most incredible ways over history. Sri Lanka in my lifetime has never been united. The only two examples that I give uh, when, I sp when I talk is when Sri Lanka played Australia in 1996 for 24 hours, we were all Sri Lankans. Muttaya Murlidharan was not Tamil. Sanat Jayasuriya was not from the South. Arjuna Ranatunga was not an Anandian. And uh, Vas was not Catholic. We played as Sri Lanka. I can remember when I took Anruddha Ratnayak for the Olympic Games, for eight minutes, Sri Lankans prayed for him. Our factories of nearly 75,000 people came one hour before and uh, chanted Pirit, you know, before the fight, which came as a shock to me. So you, sports have been a great unifier. Amongst the sports within our country, cricket has been on the topmost tier, primarily because of the high frequency of competitions. From the inception of cricket in the year 1832, the country has gone ahead to win the 1996 World Cup, which is considered to be one of the greatest moments in the cricketing history of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has also won the 2014 T20 World Cup as well. ICC has inducted Muttaya Muralidharan, Kumar Sangakkara and Mahila Jayawardana to its Hall of Fame. However, based on the most recent evaluations of the ICC, Sri Lanka's men's cricket team is placed 9th in the ODI rankings, 9th in the T20 rankings and 8th in the Test rankings. The women's team is ranked at 9th in the ODI rankings and 8th in the T20 rankings. Therefore, it is clear that the game we all admire needs to pick up its pace to keep up with its former glory. The current team had seen a reduction in salaries for the year 2021 to 2022. This was witnessed with the introduction of the performance-linked pay system that is being followed by the SLC. As reported by the morning newspaper based on the new categorizations introduced by the SLC, a Category A player will approximately be paid between 900,000 rupees to 1.6 million rupees per month. Meanwhile, a conversation has been raised about the coaching changes within Sri Lanka as well. Sri Lanka previously appointed former Sri Lankan test player Chandika Hathurusinghe as head coach in December 2017. But he was terminated after the team ended up sixth in the 2019 ODI World Cup. Miki Arthur, the current coach, will leave after Sri Lanka's two-match home test series against the West Indies this month. Miki Arthur's record for the two years he coached, the team was set at 55 matches participated, out of which 17 were won, 31 lost, 5 drawn and 2 with no results. The win-loss ratio was 0.548. This data is from across all three formats. In assessing these figures, it must be noted that the responsibility is not only on the players and the coaching staff, but the general public as well. The relentless abuse on social media of certain cricketers has played a harmful role in the development of mindset. Domestic football and cricket teams in England recently began a boycotting campaign to deal with the abuses present online. Take the sports and the, and the actual uh, performance output, a lot of it has come from the outstations over the years where they, and also too, in, in Sri Lanka there is an unhealthy uh, focus on cricket, mm -hmm. you know, yes we have won uh, a 50 over World Cup, a T20 World Cup, we made countless finals, we are at, a, at an elite level in this sport, but that is not the only sport that we are, we are good at, I mean if you take Olympics, 
you know, cricket might end up in the Olympics at, at some point in the near future, but Susantika Jaising and, and Duncan White. In the Commonwealth Games, we've won four gold medals since its inception. In the Asian Games, only 11 gold medals. But the fact that we are getting to a stage where we can compete with the best in the world is, is very promising. A unique opportunity to reform the brand of Sri Lankan cricket has been made available through the Lanka Premier League, which is Sri Lanka's topmost domestic tournament. The Lanka Premier League for 2021 will commence on the 5th of December in Colombo, with the inaugural game scheduled to be played between Gaul and Jaffna teams. The tournament will consist of 24 games and we see the participation of topmost domestic and international cricketers. The Lanka Premier League 2021 will be officiated by a highly recognised match referee panel and umpiring panel led by Chief Match Referee of the ICC, Ranjan Madugal, who is the first Chief Referee ever appointed as it was a new position introduced by the ICC. In the long run, many efforts have been taken by the current sports ministry to develop the quality of cricket within Sri Lanka. Multiple resources have been made available for the local cricketers such as the Brain Centre, which provides a place to conduct evaluations and high-tech research on competitive teams in a bid to help improve cricket across the country for all teams and age groups. The effect cricket has on the people of Sri Lanka can be used to benefit the overall image of the country in the long run. However, that effort will be in vain if the entire population doesn't work together. Mahesh, I think reviewing the real story and reviewing most of the programs we did, Working towards unity is something, though it is a difficult topic, it is something that we have to address and that is something we can address within today's programme as well. Um, not only for sports, but it trickles down to all other areas, even if we were, what I've been talking about, the organic fertiliser thing, now that is something we need to understand as a united country, that it is done for our betterment and not some political agenda or anything of that sort. Well, thank you very much uh, with the real story there. Let's take a short commercial break. On the other side, cricketing legend Roshan Mahanama. This is Get Real. Be right back.